We're working with Apana Vayu, the prana that moves downward. The word Vayu means wind, and Apana means the downward motion. So we're going to work a lot with the ground and receiving the support of the ground and allowing ourselves to eliminate, to give back to earth that which has been in excess, right? So many, if only, or what if, right? And just bringing everything back in to here and now, what's needed in this moment. So we begin. All right, Yoda, now you're going to have to look at your yoga mat. Go on. Good boy. And we'll begin with abdominal breathing, which is very calming. We're going to take our blanket from this position, and we're going to fold it in three, like so. And then we are going to lie down in a prone position with the, with the blanket right at the softest part of the abdomen, and we're just going to breathe into it. The arms will be supporting your forehead, so your hands can be like this, and then any place in the body that may be holding on to tension, you can dissolve that along with the breath work. As you come down, you can come into a sphinx pose first. Make sure that you adjust the blanket just right. You don't want it on your ribs, and you don't want it on your hips. And then take your hands one on top of the other and rest your forehead there. Now, if you've just eaten some food, this will definitely not be appropriate. So just take notes and do it again at a later time. You've got to give your body a chance to digest, assimilate the foods, before doing your practice. And then as you observe the breath, you will find that on the inhale, the, the belly moves towards the blanket. And on the outhale, the breath moves away from the blanket. I cannot take credit for the outhale. <laughs> that comes from my little four-year-old niece disco, but I think I'm going to adopt it because it's so cute. So in any rate, continue on breathing in this way, in this calming way. Any sensations you experience in the abdomen, it's blockages that are being released. Apanavayu is about elimination. Elimination, as you know, is essential. Daily elimination, like taking out the trash so that your immune system can be healthy and strong. Right? So this is a way to stimulate peristaltis and just to get things working properly there. And once you've completed your next in-breath, move on up on the out-breath your hands and knees and then turn that blanket so that it's vertical and drive it back so that it can once again support the base as you stretch back into balasana child's pose here you want room for your chest, and you're just using the blanket to support the rounding of the spine so that the earth is up a little bit higher. Yeah, Yoda, you want to go? Thank you. The forehead can be resting down, forehead moving towards the ridge of the nose is a good plan. Releasing any tension that you may be experiencing between the shoulder blades, any gripping. 
The idea of apana is that here is the earth right beneath you. You give the excess to the earth. You don't need to hold on to it. Especially if you're interested in maintaining well-being. And then from here, come on up. Up on your knees. Stay on your knees. Open up that blanket and use the blanket to support your knees. So come back so that the knees are directly below the hips as you move your hands forward, a little bit forward from your shoulders. And we're going to do here what my yoga teacher calls spinal waves. And this movement, it initiates from the base of the spine. So let's go ahead and take a nice deep breath in and I'll demonstrate. On the out breath, begin to draw the tailbone really heavy, amping out the breath as the belly hollows in, the mid back, the upper chest caves in, and then last but not least, the head comes all the way in. And there's the space between the shoulder blades, and you empty out all the air. And then you return as you went in, start with the breath inhaling from the base of the spine as the tailbone tilts up, as the belly drops, the mid back, chest opens, collarbones broaden, and then last but not least, the head comes out like a turtle coming out of the shell. And maybe the turtle wants to look one way or the other. I have a little turtle doll that does that. And then from here, return to that out breath or out here, I should say, drawing in, taking it back, rounding the spine, one vertebrae at a time. Keep going. Empty, empty, empty. And then inhale. Base of the spine. Middle of the spine, top of the spine. Once you've inhaled completely, then go ahead, exhale, outhale again, the tailbone, the rounding of the spine, rounding of the spine. And one more complete in-breath in this way. Tailbone rising, belly dropping, mid-back, chest broadening, heart lifting, sternum moving up as the collarbones open the doors, and the head comes up. And then out breath, back. How are we doing? So just this, right, takes... 10 minutes at the most. And it's the equivalent of brushing your teeth and flossing before you take off for the day. Yeah, I would say uh, the brushing of the teeth equivalent to just a few moments with your breath, and then the flossing of the teeth, a few moments with bringing fluidity into the spine. So then from here, we will move into a variation of downward facing dog, one in which we don't really need to um, stretch our hamstrings, the backs of the legs, and we still get the benefit of decompressing the spine. So take your blanket like so, fold it up in three, and then bring the blanket far back enough that if you that by having your knees on the blanket, your feet can be on the ground. And notice that my knees are slightly wider than the mat. That's how I want it for you as well. Okay? And then from here, begin to bring that torso into Adamuka, into that downward facing dog shape. And so the hips are your stabilizers, and then the spine is decompressing from that. So from the base of the belly, you are moving forward, forward towards the hands. And then the hands are pushing down and the back body is supporting that forward motion. Stay with that. Or if you like, come on up. 
so that I can show you the motion from up here. So from here, you're moving up. Everything is moving up. And then from your hands, you're using the arms to push down so that the back body is supporting you for that rise, for rising up. Okay, so let's go at it again. Arms are out. So just think, downward facing dog. Mm -hmm. Find your sternum, send it towards the mat and towards the hands, and pull the arms back, pull the hands back. And then from here, come on back. So this is a wonderful alternative to the down dog pose prior to having warmed up the hamstrings, right? Because you may not be here right from the get-go, right? Even this for me feels tight. You may be more like here, right, in which the pose does not belong. You do not belong in the pose if your spine is rounding like so. But if you can get the hamstrings out of the occasion, equation and you can drop the spine, then you're good to go. So then from here, let's step our feet onto the blanket. So, actually, the balls of the feet are on the mat, and the heels are on the blanket. And then take, take your hands to your shins, encouraging those shins to move forward towards the hands. And then encouraging the tops of the thighs to move down and back, down and back. And then lift the torso from that, right? So, if you find that your knees are unhappy here, then back off, back off. Maybe a little bit, yeah, just moving in the direction of. But what you might find is if you're here and the knees are a little bit tense and you have the wall to rely on, then it may be easier, it may become easier for you to utilize these stronger muscles and not have, and not put any strain on on the knee joints. So if that's the case, fantastic, yeah? So this is definitely a strenuous pose, right? So it's not very calming. It may be actually a little agitating, but all in all, it is strengthening us so that we can more easily access support, right? Because we walk, don't we? We stand. Hopefully we do that more and more. So sitting back like so. And then some of us may feel comfortable going all the way down. Those of us who don't, stay where you were. Here, the malasana. And those of you who are happy here, stay here. And those of us who did not make it here, please lie on the ground in a supine position with your you don't need much space, right? Just enough room for your yoga mat, but you gotta maneuver a little, like so, okay? So those of you in Malasana stay there. I'm gonna show you a variation to revolve. And then those of you who are here on the ground will bring your feet down. You lift your hips up to the right and drop the knees to the left and take a little twist, okay? And I'll walk you to the other side in a moment. But let's, let me join you guys who are here in Malasana. I'm inviting you to take your right arm to the inside of the right leg. Fingertips are down, shoulders down. And then from here, begin to open up. Find your rib cage. And the rib cage is unraveling around the vertical axis. Breathe. Sunshine is here today. This is a real gift. Breathe. On the top of your last exhalation, go a little bit further into that twist without forcing from inside. And then inhale back to center and switch sides. 
Left hand down, shoulder down. Lift to the crown of the head, drop the tail. And then on the out breath, reach and open. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist further. So those of you on the ground, go ahead and bring the feet down and, sh and wiggle over to the other side. Shoulders down. So those of you who are down, be here now. Yeah. Oh, so wonderful. I could do this all day long. And then once you've completed that twist, come back to your malasana. Reach your arms up. You, you, those of you on the ground can reach your arms up as well. Reach up and then round forward. Really rounding that spine. Come into flexion as best you can. Take your hands onto the mat and then pull away. Really opening that back body. And at the same time, closing in and coming into this Nice little shell like a like an oyster. All right, and then from here come on up. Let's remove the blanket. Move it to the side, I should say. And let's come to standing. Let's come to a really wide stance. As wide as you can while maintaining control, right? You don't want to feel like you're going off into the split. So a stable, wide stance where you feel the connection between your feet and the earth beneath you and the earth rising up to meet your feet and your feet dropping deeper to meet the earth. The thigh muscles are engaged. Now we're going to go into Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. Turn that foot that is closer to your wall. I'll call this the wall. I'll call that something else. And as you do, find your hips, square the hips. The torso should be rising from the hips. And then once you're here, you can extend your arms out, reaching out through the fingertips, your gaze is to that front leg, we'll call this the front leg, beyond the middle finger. And you may find that as you engage that back leg a little bit more, as you rely on that support, you're able to drop the femur bone of that front leg a little further. You may find that as you feel that support of the earth, engagement of the muscles, you're able to lift more through the spine and lighten things up a bit so that there's even a smile on your face as you are the warrior that you are, as the warriors that you are for sure. And then from here, let's go ahead and switch sides. So same idea, you start Recognizing that there's a little difference between the two sides of the body, right? One may be stronger while the other may be a little bit more supple. So just observing those differences. Just breathing here. That back thigh is strong. That front knee you encourage it to move back so that you really work that back glute. And the gaze is soft, but it's definitely directed in one way towards the right hand. And if it feels too strenuous, just come back out, yeah? And then visit it again. Be kind to yourselves. Be loving. This is a loving practice. Back in. So we'll revisit the first side once more. And those of you who have, who feel like there's a lot going on here, 
stay with this and just work through that. And those of you who are ready for the next stop, I invite you to take the forearm onto the thigh and use that forearm to encourage that femur bone to drop down even more. And making sure that the shoulder is nice and free, place in its socket, the neck is open, yeah? And then from here, the full expression of this pose, or a variation of it, full expression would be with the arm all the way down, but a variation with the, with the forearm onto the thigh, you bring the top arm by the ear, side angle pose, partial kanasana, the legs are rooting, so you're definitely opening the, opening the hips here, yeah? From warrior two to what we're doing now, making those hips a little bit more supple. And then go ahead and switch, drawing that leg in, opposite leg out, come on down. So again, if there's a lot going on, just with this pose, that's good, there should be. This is a powerful pose. Don't need to go any further today. Enjoy this sight, yeah? Take it in. But if you do, feel ready for the next level. And go ahead and take partial kanasana. With the forearm onto the thigh to assist even further with that grounding, that rooting. Since we're working with a panavai. Breathe. Length, length of the spine. Oh, I feel the sun shining. So lovely. And then come on back. Third time. So again, just warrior two, Virabhadrasana two, or just Parjvokanasana, just breathing with that. Or you may want to take it a little bit further and revisit the dog pose from yet another angle. Broadening through the shoulders as you clasp your hands back behind you. Take the torso all the way down. Once you've gone as far as you can go, make sure to maintain that leg nice and strong and the front knee drawing back. Stretch your arms out as if you were once more in Adamukha in Downward Facing Dog. Decompressing the spine as best you can here. And if you are into kissing the ground in different ways, as Rumi puts it, then here's one opportunity to do that. Mwah! And then from here, come on back. As you went in, draw that foot back in. Final side. Number six. Here we go. So once again, just working with that warrior. Yeah? Or working with that extended angle pose. Or taking it one step further. Clasping the hands back behind you, lengthening the spine, folding. So the legs must stay really strong here, yeah? So that the torso is safe to release. Reaching the arms. And let go. So feeling that stability of the earth through your hands, through your feet, to the engagement of the legs, to decompress the spine. It should feel wonderful. And a similar way to kiss the ground from a slightly different angle. Mwah! And draw it back. And you can just nudge your legs back together and face the wall. So now here, we're going to go a little bit deeper into the opening of the hips. We're going to bring that left leg up in a 90 degree angle. Cross it over the thigh, the right thigh. Make sure that, that right, the right toes are pointing straight ahead. And then sit back. Now, as you sit back, you will find that that left hip wants to dump down, yeah? So 
Find that hip and encourage it to move to the left corner of your room, the furthest left corner of the room. And so you're still in this very similar feeling, what we did before with the Utkatasana, with the chair pose, yeah? The back body is broad, the glutes are working a lot, and you are allowing more space through that left hip flexor, the hip, left hip. And then as you're ready, come on up. So this is the house of a panavayu, a pelvic floor, the base of the spine with Lahara chakra. So we give our attention to it. So that excess movement that agitates us, aggravates us, can move down. No? Move down. Mm -hmm. So find that right outer hip, which may be drooping a little here, and sand it to the furthest right corner of your room. The neck is free, the back body's free. You're not arching in any way here, yeah? There's an opening, opening opening. And Ingar has a quote, which I can't really quote right now because I don't remember exactly, but it's something about prana writing on the back body, like the back body is a chalkboard and prana is the chalk. So I kind of envision that here. Keeping things broad. And then that's strenuous again, right? So if you feel like you're up for the challenge and you want to do it one more time and go a little deeper into it, by all means, do that now. And those of you who feel like you want a little bit more of that upon a value support, the earth support, then do this other variation with me. Okay? So we're going to take the blanket like so. And we're going to sit with our legs up on the wall and we want to make sure that the legs are in a 90 degree angle here okay so adjust up or back as needed and then from here you can lift up your shoulders a little lift up your head just create that length and just whew, take a moment to appreciate the gift of the earth beneath you and let everything go. Revisit this place in just a little bit. But one more pose first. One more hip opener. We're going to take the left leg up, cross it over just as we did standing. Make sure that the foot is active. The hips are active. And now you're using that wall, the earth, and this front thigh, the right thigh to broaden through the left hip to create space. So we're actually using the boundaries that we're given to discover more space. And what an opportunity we have in life right now to do that. And those of you who are working double and triple shifts right now as heroes to support all the rest of us who will get to stay home. May you too have little windows of time to do that. Discover more space within. Let's go ahead and switch legs. So again, the boundary is the wall. Press into that. The boundary is the ground, the earth. Press into that or rest into that, but firmly. And then from there, the ankle over the right thigh, go ahead and broaden that right hip. So maybe this is a time where you are discovering that so many of the things that you rushed about for are really truly not necessary. Maybe when this social distancing ends, 
and you can return to your routines, you will not implement those things and you will continue to allow more space for healing, for connection, for creativity, for making the world a better place. And then from here, come on back. And now we move on to the most exciting pose of all. Definitely a strong upon a value pose, but also um, it's a resting pose. So it's, uh, let's go ahead and just set up the blanket like we did in the very beginning. I'll tell you about it in a minute. So this is an inversion that also allows you to rest completely. So it's really powerful, very, very uh, useful. If no other pose, you do this pose for five minutes a day. But then again, you might wanna brush your teeth and dental floss too, right? So then the other one in the morning. Um, if you have a blanket handy, another second blanket handy, bring that near, but you don't need it. If you have a uh, scarf handy, bring that near as well. Now you come, this is where I should put in the pause button, right? Pause, go get your stuff, play, and then here we are again, hello. Um, so now, you want to sit on the blanket in a way that allows the groins to be heavy and that natural curvature of the spine to be maintained. So there's a little space, as you see, between the blanket and the wall. And then um, for those of you who plan on doing this pose for a long time, I'm not saying that you will right now because you've already invested a, quite a bit of time in your practice, but those of you who come want to come here again on your own, you may want to take another blanket, open it up all the way or halfway at least, and you bring your feet right to the center of it so that you have that nice cushion of the wall, and then wrap yourselves up like a little, like your legs are a burrito or the contents of the burrito and the and the blanket is the bread. <laughs> and then from here, take the scarf, nice soft scarf, and place it over your eyes. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to invite you to observe sensations in your body. And as you observe them, you get to release tension wherever you find it. And those of you who can stay here longer today and don't mind my closing after, just stay with it. Yeah? And I encourage you to return to this place again and again. Viparita Karani is an inversion, therefore it gives you the benefits of improved circulation, every cell of the body, of a panavayu elimination, digestion, it opens the belly. It also opens the chest. Yeah? And draws the shoulders back so there is a calming in a very inviting way in a very open uplifting way so let's begin by bringing our attention to that place between the eyebrows and releasing any tension we find there Bringing our attention to the jaw, the tongue, releasing that a bit so that your 
lips, your teeth part. Bring your attention to that place between the shoulder blades. And allow parts of the shoulder blades that are touching the ground to deepen, to go heavier, more weighty into the ground. For the contact of the blanket, the back body, area along the kidneys, feel that support. And allow your abdomen to drop more completely into that area. And move your awareness up through the legs. All the way up to your feet. The soles of your feet will be the top of a water fountain. And the water is shooting up and dropping back down. And you can continue in this way, sending your attention to different parts of the body, dissolving tension. Those of you who are coming out of this pose now so that you can carry on with the rest of your day, listen to my guidance. And those of you who are going to stay here a bit longer, you can forego my guidance. Yeah, just let it be in the background. Noticing, paying attention to your own inner guidance. Let's go ahead and draw both knees into the chest. Let's roll to the side, either side that is most comfortable for you. Do it slowly, mindfully. Roll all the way forward, leaving behind any aspect of this practice that you don't need to take with you or any aspect of this morning of this week, of the past few weeks, that you're ready to leave behind. And planting into your heart a seed, a seed which you wish to see bloom, which you are eager to care for, tend to. Maybe something as simple as five minutes of belly breath in the morning. And when you've picked up your seed, then take the top hand to push away, push your torso away from the earth with the head being the last thing to come up. Hmm. And then let's go ahead and come back into a seated position for a moment. Make 
actually your account privilege. Yeah. You can join your hands in Anjali Mudra if you wish. Om Bhu Aswa Tat Savitur Varenyam Bargo Devasya Dimai Yonyona Prachodaya Om Peace Shanti Shalom Amen